Get a new job. That's the secret. You can click off the video now and that's the only action you need to take. Even though you've been told by colleagues and you've seen people in the industry fly up the pay ranks by moving around jobs, you tell yourself different reasons why that wouldn't work for you and, and how changing jobs every 11 months means that you're just going to have so many different companies on your CV that nobody in their right mind would hire you because they know they're just going to lose you pretty fast. And you're right. There is a balancing game to be played, but also there's a lot of money to be made. And if you're too far on either side of the spectrum, you're either massively under earning or you become unemployable. So the idea behind this video comes from an actual client of mine who has had such a ridiculously fast turnaround, not because of any specific coaching or strategy, just because they pulled the trigger and actually started looking around to see how much they're really worth. But before we talk about that, we need to think about why people are actually settling for less. So I think the main reason behind this is it's just so difficult to judge your value. You might be in an industry where you're fighting tooth and nail just to get to average salary and you know that everybody around you is struggling to get there and the few people at the company who have that income, well, they're just 10x developers and they're but on the flip side, there are people who go into these jobs where their starting salary is the thing that you're dreaming of, and for them, they're working towards something that's 10, 20, 30, 50% more. And the chances are that person putting in the effort trying to move their salary up from, say, 40k to 50k is putting in a similar amount of time and energy as the person who's trying to go from 60 to 80. The only difference is, is where they're putting that effort in, and it's the company and what they're willing to pay. Consider this. Many of you would have had part-time jobs when you are at university or in college. You probably knew people at your McDonald's job who were working incredibly hard to, you know, get that management role or get that assistant management. And now that you're a software engineer, you might not even be working as hard as they were working. Or maybe you're working just as hard. But the point is, is that all of that effort for them is only going to get them to whatever the average salary of a McDonald's manager is. That might be going from $20,000 to $25,000, where when you're a software engineer, that promotion might mean 10, 15,000 from 40 to 55. Well, you need to have that perspective, not only between, in my example, McDonald's to your software engineering role, but your software engineering role relative to other ones that you could achieve with your tech stack. If you're willing to put in the effort to get that pay rise, make sure you put the effort in at the right place. And you might even find that that two, four, six years of experience that you have is already more hard work done. And just by going to another company, there's a good chance they'll just offer you that pay rise there and then. Start asking around. If you're a Java developer, and presumably over the years, you've got to know people who don't work at your company anymore. Whether that's ex-colleagues or just friends from university that went to different industries and companies. Get an idea of what they were doing when they had your amount of years of experience. How much were they making? Are they making a lot more than you are? Another good way of doing this, if you don't have a network, is start speaking to recruiters. Just say to them, hey, here's my experience and background. Here's what I'm good at. How much money do you think I should be asking for? And if the reason that you're watching this video is because actually you've stayed at your company a very, very long time and you've not really thought about changing jobs, but now that I mention it, you're thinking about it, you're probably going to be quite shocked by the pay discrepancy between, you know, somebody who's stayed in one place four to five years just relying on annual pay rises and promotions relative to what a different company that has the budget to hire talent now is going to offer you to jump ship. And I think another reason you get people who bend longer than they should in one role is because they remember how tough it was getting that first job. You might even still be in your first job, you know. It's not uncommon for people to get trained up junior to mid to maybe even senior all within the same company across four to eight years. And if you are one of those people, then yeah, you probably do remember how hard it was to get your foot on the ladder to begin with. Nobody wants to hire you when you have no experience, no matter how good your degree was or your internships were. And with all the news about the tech layoffs, you're probably even more concerned. But in both America and England, demand for experienced software engineers is still huge. One of the biggest topics that if you go and look at business articles for technology, the focus for 2023 and onwards is all around retaining and accumulating talent talent being the operative word, people who are already proven in being able to do certain skills and bringing them in to either do that or to do things adjacent to that skill. You're probably already that person. You're probably already that thing that companies are fighting for. And if you think I'm wrong, but you haven't done an interview in the last two years, prove me wrong. Apply to five jobs that you would never be interested in actually agreeing to. Go to the interviews just for a bit of practice and see what they offer you. If it's exactly what you're on now, then okay. Maybe we need to spend a few more years getting better at what we do. Or maybe we're not that good at interviews. But there's a good chance that what they do offer you is way higher than what you're currently on. And that's going to be the wake-up call of, shit, why am I working now for my current wage when I could be earning 25% more per hour? Right, so how do we position ourselves for these higher offers? Well, I'm not going to give you the generic advice. You know the basics. You know how to make a CV. You know how to show up to an interview prepared. But I don't want you just being an average attendant. I want you to be somebody who actively stands out and maybe has offered roles over people who are more experienced. And I 
I've done this using some pretty simple strategies. You have to get good at presenting yourself and presenting yourself in terms of value. What this used to look like was reading a bunch of interview books on how to answer questions the perfect way, how to talk in terms of your achievements and make sure that the achievements that you're talking about, you're saying, here's the value I brought to the company, not look at me, I'm so great, which a lot of us tend to do, you'd be surprised. But now it's easier than ever. You don't actually even have to read. Your best bet is to pay, what is it, 20 quid for a month's ChatGPT premium and just use its voice mode because it's literally trained on all of those textbooks. And if you say to it, can we simulate a job a job interview for, and then you could just copy paste in the application that you're currently looking at, it's going to start asking you questions. And if, <laughs> and if you sit there and think, oh shit, I have no idea how to respond to this, which you probably, that will be your natural reaction because if you've just been working a software role, you've been getting good at software development, not good at interviews. And that's where you get caught out. You don't get the offers that you're probably worth getting. So what happens? You try again. And then maybe by the fifth time, it's asking you questions and you're answering quite well, or at least you think so. So what's the next thing to do? You say to it, how can I improve? And it's going to give you curated advice on how to answer interviews better based on a good amount of interview literature. If you find it's getting too easy, you can say to it, make the interview harder, and it will. You can ask it that every five questions, it gives you a rundown of the things that you did well and the things that you did poor of. If you did this half an hour a night for a couple of weeks, you are going to be exponentially better than anybody going to any interview. Because what preparation do they have other than the four that have already turned them down and they're feeling pretty shit about it? You're going to come out the gate crushing it because you know that you can answer questions effectively and display yourself well. And I did exactly this for a software role that I went for, and the people hiring me told me that they had a candidate who was more experienced than me, but they wanted to hire me and not them. And the only difference was is the way that I communicated. Now let's think about this in terms of return on investment. Is it worth your time to actually close YouTube right now and actually start looking into jobs that might pay you a little bit more? Well, think about it this way. Either way, you're going to be working your 40 hour work week for whatever your salary is. Let's say that's $50,000 a year. There is probably a company out there, albeit maybe with higher standards, that is willing to pay you $65,000 for that exact same amount of work. The only thing standing between you and that 65,000 pound job is being able to succeed in the game that is their interview process. If you put in half an hour an evening into either attending the interview, getting better at the interview, maybe brushing up on basic literature like algorithms. There's no reason why, what, in a month you couldn't start applying for these jobs that are slightly above where you're at right now. Well, if you can get it done in a month, that's only 15 hours worth of effort. 30 days, half an hour a day. 30 hours for 15K is gonna be the highest hourly return on your effort that you could do. But when you're paying in that half an hour, I think I'm getting paid $500 or pounds for every hour that this adds up to, because that's where it is. And if you work like you're being paid 500 pound an hour, you're gonna achieve it. You're gonna get that job. So before you move on to the next YouTube video, go update your CV, go apply for five jobs, and just give yourself some preparation before the interview. And if you want a more detailed breakdown of that system that I was talking about that's GPT-focused to give you that edge, I've actually got a whole video on it, so click here. Cheers.